السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Often we have people who say if I believe in the Creator why do we need prophets? How important is the role of prophets? And then there are those who do not even believe in God. First, before we answer the question on why the prophets, we must acknowledge that one has to first believe in God's existence, then talk about the prophets because they are related. If one does not believe in God, then discussing the prophets is a moot point. Well, regarding the existence of God, we can easily say that Majority of people with intellect, ugala, throughout the world believe in God's existence in some form or fashion. Even many atheists starting to acknowledge the existence of some form of intelligence behind all the creation and its perfect order. One of the most prominent atheists, Anthony Flo, an English uh, philosopher who belonged to the analytic and evidence-based schools of thought and was most notable for his work related to philosophy of religion, rejected God's existence for most of his life. Then came to the conclusion that due to overwhelming evidence and order, there is an intelligence behind the ordering universe, one that created it all. During the course of his career, he taught at several distinguished universities, and for much of his career, Anthony Flo was known as a strong advocate of atheism, arguing that one should presuppose atheism until empirical evidence of a god surfaces. He also criticized the idea of life after death. Then, in 2004, he stated his adherence to deism, more specifically a belief in the Aristotelian God. He indicated due to complex order of creation and life, there is overwhelming evidence in intelligent design and a single intelligence behind it. He stated that in keeping his lifelong commitment to go where the evidence leads. He now believed in the existence of God. Similar to what our early Muslim scholars who said, we follow intellect and reason. Wherever it circles, we follow it. No biases, no preconceived notions, just reason and evidence. Now, of course, with advances in study of genes and DNA sequencing, more evidences are pouring in as atheists like Francis Collins from the Human Genome Project acknowledges and consequently believes in existence of God. These two just a couple of examples of prominent atheists who through scholarly work came to believe in existence of God, not just haphazardly, through scholarly work. Our discussion today, however, is not to prove existence of God, but rather beyond belief in God, as most people do, why do we need prophets? Which is the topic of our session today, inshallah. Prophethood or nubuwa, as mentioned in different uh, you know, Islamic books, we find that divine, divine wisdom, hikmah, requires nubuwa. Prophethood. Now, we want to analyze why the divine wisdom in creating human necessitates prophethood or the need for prophets. You see, animals' creation is complete without any guidance from outside. Why? Because they are guided internally by their instincts. They don't have the same intelligence as we do, but they have the guidance on what to do and not to do, built in within their instinct. Look at bees, for example. 
without going to any technical school, learning architecture or engineering, they build these nest structures with hexagonal cells that have equal lines and angles where they store their honey and pollen. They do so without going to any school, without any guidance or training from outside, without rulers, without compass. Other insects like uh, you know, ants or animals conduct the same way through their instincts. In human, however, this is not the case. Humans need external guidance and training. A newborn does not know anything, but as he grows, he learns, he earns knowledge and guidance from external sources in order to lead his life. If he does not get his primary education from school, from parents and other sources, he will be like a wild animal. And even then, he would still need to learn some basic skills in order to survive. Hence, human is a form of creation that requires external guidance and training. Although he has intellect, aql, through which he learns. In addition, humans make mistake and learn from experience empirically. For example, you look at homes people built thousand years ago or even several hundred years ago. These homes were susceptible to elements. They were not efficient. They could not resist, for example, some of the natural disasters. Whereas now, we build with better techniques, better material. We build big buildings, skyscrapers, etc., etc. Which means we have advanced. We have learned from our mistakes and eliminated flaws. However, the bee nest from a thousand years ago has not changed and it remains the same. It has no advances, but instead has no mistakes in it either. Whereas human mind makes mistakes but learns and advances and corrects its mistakes or flaws. Now, with this introduction, let's see. In this complex system of creation where we believe in God as the creator and his divine essence and his divine wisdom, hikmah, and that everything is conducted under his supervision, for sure there is an aim, a purpose in his creating these creatures, including humans. But humans have a need for external guidance and training. You might say, well, he, a human has intellect, aql. But their intellect, aql, is not sufficient. Why is it not sufficient? Because, firstly, aql, intellect, makes mistakes. It has enemies called human wants and desires, which pull intellect in different directions and force it to justify things, to rationalize going to different directions. How many times you and I faced a situation where the right thing to do, the dutiful thing to do was difficult. So we justified in our mind to take the easier path. Uh, I'm now in a situation or my circumstance is as such that I can't do this, it's difficult, it takes time. I have to spend money. We keep wanting to get out of it and justify not doing the right thing. This is how we humans are. It's because our aql, intellect, has enemies, opponents. Our intellect does not operate in vacuum. Our intellect is not independent where it identifies and analyzes independent of our desires and whims and wants. Secondly, when human aql, intellect, realizes something, recognizes something, 
differences of opinion and thoughts among people's mind are formed. For example, you look at philosophy. The philosophers have different opinions. In economy, the economists have different opinions. In politics, the expert politicians have differences of opinion. In theoretical science, the same thing. In human and social science, the scientists have different opinions. Now, this God who created the animals complete, mature, perfect, so they fulfill their duty, fulfill what God intended them to do. He then just created the humans a head and shoulder above animals and left them alone because he gave them intellect, act. And he left their intellect alone with enemies like wants and desires and then the differences in thoughts and opinions? No, absolutely not. Humans need an external supplement to be completed in their creation, to reach their kamal, to be perfected in their uh, creation. Without the supplement, the creation of human is incomplete. I repeat, human needs an external supplement to reach his completion. If he does not add the supplement, his creation is incomplete and cannot reach its goal, which is Kamal, perfection, excellence. Look, Quran talks about creation and then guidance. First creation and then guidance. That is, Allah said, we did not just create. We created and then gave guidance. Pharaoh, Pharaoh asks Mo Moses, peace be upon him. Who is your Lord, O Moses? Moses, peace be upon him, replies, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Rabbuna alladhi a'ta kulla shay'in khalqahu thumma hada. Our Lord is he who gave everything its creation and then guided it to its goal or, you know, to, for its purpose. Chapter 20, verse 50. And then in Surah Al-Insan, Quran says, Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtali fajalnahu sami'an basira. Indeed, we created man from a drop of mingled fluid in order to test him. So we gave him the gifts of hearing and sight. In this verse, the hearing and sight does not mean just the physical senses because animals can hear and see too. The reference is the man, is that the man must ponder and reflect on what he sees and what he hears. You could also say hearing and seeing of heart and mind. It then follows in the next verse, Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. We showed him the way, we guided him whether he be grateful or ungrateful, rests on his will, on his decision. Chapter 76, verses 2 and 3. So, in these three verses I just recited, we have first, Khalagna, creation, then Hadaynahud, his guidance, training, which is external, given in order for us to reach the goal he intended for us, which is Kamal, Perfection. God attributes both Khalaqn al Insan, creation of man, and the guidance showing the way, Hadaynahu Sabil, to himself because he knows the aql, the intellect he gave us as a standard feature is not enough. It is susceptible to enemies like wants, desires, it is prone to mistakes. It can be influenced by differences of thoughts and opinions, etc., etc. But he gave the choice to us whether we want to take the guidance or not. How could he just give human his body 
and intellect with all these external enemies and influences. And then just leave us and tell us, go to the right direction to reach your excellence. I intended for you. How could he? And we know that he did create us for a purpose. Did you think we created you, created you in vain without purpose? Chapter 23, verse 115. Every member in our body, every sense in our body testifies that we were created for a purpose. Now, how could he, how could God create us without guidance? You know, it's like someone, you go and invest a lot of money in a company and build a big factory with all the equipment and hire all the right people, the experts, the factory workers, but then you have no plan. They all show up the first day, there is no plan. They don't know what to build. They don't know what to do. Who are we supposed to get the guidance from, this training from? Surely, the God who created us did not leave his work unfinished. He, he did give us the guidance, the manual for life, the guidance for us to reach our Kamal, our excellence. You might say, okay, yes, I get it. Allah guides us through his prophets. But there are those who still go astray even with given guidance. That is true. That is true. That is because the choice is ours whether we want to take his guidance or not. Allah not only created us and gave us guidance through his prophets, he also gave us the freedom of choice on whether we want to take the guidance or not. You see, if humans were forced to take his guidance, then all humans would be perfect and all would reach their kamal, their excellence. But then this world would not be a testing ground. We do have evil in this world. We do have Pharaoh, Yazid. We do have Hitler. Inna hadayna sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. We showed him the way. We guided him whether he be grateful or ungrateful. Rests on his decision. In other words, it has not been left up to humans to guess what is guidance. Guidance has been given. It is our choice to take it or not. The goal is to reach the peak of perfection. An apple tree will not reach its goal until it produces lots of good, delicious, and healthy apples. The fruit of human creation is its camel, perfection. We all have this potential. We have the talent to be good, noble human beings reaching the peak. So with all this potential, this talent, this capability, God did not give us the plan to accomplish it? He did not show us the way to accomplish it? He left it up to Karl Marx or Lenin? He did design the plan. He did show us the way and the guidance. Prophethood, Nubuwa, means God's plan to complete his creation of human being. Prophethood brings the complete lesson plan on guidance and how to practice it. That is the prophet's mission. All for a human who already has the talent, the potential, and wants to reach his excellence. Nubuwa, prophethood, is the supplement that completes man's creation. And you see, this understanding is correct as we realize we have had many prophets who came in different times to different nations to bring this guidance. Hence, this is not just a hypothesis. In fact, it did happen and ended with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
as he brought the last and final testament with complete book of guidance. Prophets, peace be upon them all, dedicated their lives, their whole lives, on their mission. The Quran says, and, and for every nation there is a messenger. Chapter 10, verse 47. Of course, Muslims believe many prophets were sent periodically by Allah. At least one to every nation as a mercy to mankind for their guidance. In certain circumstances, the message of the prophets was lost, corrupted, forgotten, neglected, or denied by the people or the generations that followed. These were some of the reasons why a new prophet would be sent to reconvey God's message. Now, what is prophethood and what are the characteristics of prophets? The main difference between an ordinary human being and a prophet is that a prophet receives revelation from Allah. Islamic definition of prophethood is that from the very first person that God created, Adam, peace be upon him, he sent guidance for human beings as to how to live a good life. And these people who brought and delivered the guidance are called prophets. Muslims believe that all the prophets brought the same basic message, namely that God alone is our Lord and should be worshipped, or the monotheistic message, and to teach how people can live a righteous life. And that prophets are best examples to be followed and obeyed. You know, they all had noble and righteous characters. They lived in full obedience to God with excellent moral characters. They were truthful in speech and conduct. For this reason, Muslims reject totally the false attribution of major sins to earlier prophets as appears in some scriptures of other religions. Allah gave all prophets certain characteristics in order for them to successfully fulfill their mission, such as, you know, persistence, courage, purity, leadership, patience, and wisdom. Since all prophets were sent by the one true God, their message was the one and the same, and to remind people of their purpose in life. Their mission was to, number one, clarify the true concept of God and oneness of God and reject false beliefs. Number two, demonstrate how God should be worshipped and God alone should be worshipped. Number three, teach the true purpose of life and how to live it righteously and happily. Number four, convey God's definition of righteous and sinful, harmful conduct. Number six, to give glad tidings and warn people, um, you know, uh, about the last day. Describe the accountability and the concept of rewards for obedience. Muslims believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the last prophet was sent to confirm the message of previous prophets and complete the message for later generations. And, you know, as you know, from the very beginning of his mission, leaders of Mecca offered Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, much wealth. They offered to give him a high position of power, the best spouse, and much, much more, as you read in all books of Sira. You know what his reply was? He said, I swear by Allah, if you put the sun in one of my hands and the moon in the other, I will not quit my invitation to Islam until I leave this world. This was his truth and fully implemented till the last day of his life. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final prophet for all mankind from his time up until end of time. 
including current and future generations. He was a perfect example of an honest, just, merciful, compassionate, truthful, and brave human being. He, like other prophets before him, did not have any evil characteristics and strove solely for the sake of Allah. He was a great example for humankind to follow. As Quran says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُصْفَةً حَسَنَةً لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآخِرِ In the Messenger of Allah, you have indeed a fine example for he who hopes for Allah on the last day. Chapter 33, verse 21. <coughs> Michael Hart, in his book, the 100 ranking of the most influential persons in, in the history, writes, quote, My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some leaders and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in, his, in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. He was an apostle, statesman, legislator, warrior, philosopher, reformer, businessman, refugee of orphans, and conqueror of hearts. Unquote. Lamartine, the renowned historian, says, quote, If greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and astounding results are the three criteria of human genius, who could dare to compare any great man in wisdom, you know, and in modern history with Muhammad, the founder of 20 terrestrial empires and of one spiritual empire, that is Muhammad. As regards to all the standards by which human greatness may be measured, we may well ask is there any man greater than he? Unquote. Nobuwa and completing his mission was so important to him that he was ready to forgive the ones who murdered members of his family. You know, we have seen throughout history the leaders of revolution, and Muhammad definitely had a revolution. The leaders of revolutions, they make the kind of claims after victory. Claims like, we are the one who did this. We lead the people to such and such. We will teach others a lesson. We will punish such and such. We will give this or that to people. They give these speeches and slogans. You know when the victory comes to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what does he say? إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدُ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا When help and victory comes from Allah and you see people entering the religion of God in large groups, glorify your Lord with praise and gratitude and ask him for forgiveness for he is oft returning in grace and mercy. Chapter 110, verse, verses 1 through 3. This is how he responds to victory according to instruction from Quran. Go praise God, thank him, ask for his forgiveness for any shortcoming and flaws. Prophets never asked for any compensation for any of the work they put in toward their mission. So, when we see such great, honorable, noble men who came with all sincerity and truthfulness, bringing the guidance and practicing it in front of us, why would we not believe in them? Why would we want to betray ourselves and our intellect? 
This is the only way to reach the excellence in moral and ethical conduct, to reach perfection in creation. In addition, our creation is not just for these few days of pain and hardship. The most compassionate, the most merciful God does not limit his creation to these few days that we're in this world. What intellect can guide us? We have conflicts and differences of opinion in most basic issues. How would we know which is the right way and why? How could we build a human race that is destined for the next world and hereafter? He is the one who has to give us the plan, the program, show us the way by which we can get there. Therefore, he has not left it to such and such scientists' intellect or such and such scholars' intellect because prophethood carries the torch of guidance from the divine creator. We must then acknowledge and follow the prophet's footsteps. How could a sound mind not accept it and turn it down? When Allah says in Quran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Allah has surely been gracious to the believers when he sent among them a messenger from themselves to recite to them his verses, to purify them and to teach them the book and the wisdom. Though before they were in clear error. Chapter 3, verse 164. All the corruptions indecencies, deceptions, and injustice in our societies? Where is the Islamic ethics and morals in the so-called Muslim nations? What is the reason for their lack of? Because we have ignored or set aside the guidance, the book of God, the manual on how to operate and conduct our lives, which was brought by the Prophet. It is no surprise that Prophet, peace be upon him, complains in Quran. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا The Messenger says, O oh my Lord, my people have taken this Quran while deserting it, forsaken it. Chapter 25, verse 30. We ask Allah to help us be among those who have not forsaken his book. Of guidance. May Allah make us among those who obey Him, obey His Messenger, and follow Him. May Allah make us among the believers who receive their moral and ethical conduct from His Book. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.